This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. So I tell you what, today is the premiere of Venom Hunters on Discovery Channel, so you knew I was gonna have to do a show on venomous snakes. I'm down here at Black Magic Reptiles, and what a beauty this animal is here. This is actually an Egyptian banded cobra. This happens to be the second largest cobra species in Africa, just behind the forest cobra. And they are just absolutely stunning, but huge, huge animals, right? Just look at the girth on that animal right there. And the thing is, these guys can pack a heck of a punch. They can have up to 300 milligrams of neurotoxic venom with a little bit of cytotoxin in there as well. Now that neurotoxin, if you get pumped with 300 milligrams, it's gonna do a lot of damage to that nervous system. It's gonna affect the, the heart rate, eventually shut your respiratory system down. And that's one of the problems with these guys is that because they're in a lot of the, the more civilized areas, these guys will go into the villages, mainly because there's a lot of chickens and rodents that go near the garbages there. And these guys love chickens and they love rodents. And the thing that's really cool about this guy's venom and most neurotoxic venom is in medical research right now, they're being used to help things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and all kinds of other things. This right here, the venom of these animals can really help people in the future. And tonight, Venom Hunters is all about that, is collecting venom from guys like this right here and trying to save people in the future. Wow, what a gorgeous snake. My name is Brian Bartrek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll be playing with some awesome venomous snakes. You're watching Snake Bites. So this guy is gonna give me a little bit more of a run for my money. This is a monocle cobra. These guys are endemic to all over Southeast Asia. And, and they're actually relatively common in the area. So these aren't considered threatened at all. So they're, they're pretty much out there, but this one is definitely a little bit more beastie when it comes to the way she wants to handle. You can tell she's definitely not a cooperative cobra by any stretch. And that big old hood, you know, that's kind of a danger zone. You know, that's telling people to stay away. And I always tell people, you know, venomous snakes, they're not, they don't want to kill people. They really want to keep people away. And that big hood that they do says one thing. It says, I'm bigger than I am and to stay away from me. That's their defense mechanism. And oftentimes, to be totally honest with you, an animal like this right here makes me a little bit more nervous because she's not hooding up. If she's hooding up, I feel much more comfortable because she's gonna be doing a lot more mock charges and little bit of strikes. When she's not hooding up, she means business. And I tell you what, these guys have neurotoxic, a little bit of myotoxin, and even some cardiotoxin, which basically means it's just gonna mess you up on all levels from a neurotoxic standpoint all the way to shutting your heart rate down. Now these guys have been known to kill people within 60 minutes of a bite. So let me tell you what, you don't wanna be on the bite end of an animal like this. And she's a heavy bodied animal that is definitely a handful to handle. But what a beautiful snake that is. Look at that animal right there. And of course that O on the back of its head is a perfect example of what a monocle cobra is. And uh, it's certainly a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Wow. Now, a cobra like this is gonna lay up to 30 eggs, believe it or not. And wow, look at her, she is something else. Whew. And you can hear that hiss, right? That hiss is really loud for a cobra. And again, everything she's doing is basically telling me, stay away from me. I don't want to mess with you and you don't want to mess with me. But man, what a beautiful snake this is. Whew, tell you what. And she's giving me a run for my money. Let me tell you, Whew, the monocle cobra, gorgeous snake. Guys, this is another monocle cobra here, but this is actually a color mutation that's absolutely gorgeous. This is called a pastel purple highlight monocle cobra. And this guy's a little bit smaller. He's almost two years old, but when they're small like this, they're a little bit feisty, and sometimes we can really get them to hood up good for us. Let's see if we can do that. Here he goes, look at that. And again, when they hood up, it's a little bit easier to handle them, to be honest with you. When they're cruising around, you have to really be careful. But because this guy isn't really long, he can certainly zip up around me really quickly. So it's something that I certainly don't want to have to do. Now there's a handful of monocle cobra mutations, stuff like this beautiful animal here, but there's albinos and leucistics, and I tell you, 
it's pretty cool. Can you imagine hatching a, a clutch of 20 or 30 little monster monocle cobras? I mean, but look at the way this thing hoods. And again, that cool little O on the back of its head makes it so adorable. And again, these guys are really good about visual. Typically when they have a prey item, they're gonna really follow it with their eyes. And I don't wanna really let this guy go, but if I let him go and he keyed in on my eyes, oftentimes it's just gonna stay hooded and just continue to look at my eyes and follow the prey. I tell you, this is a crazy cool animal. And again, although this one's a little bit easier to handle, than that big old female because it's a little bit more predictable. It's also a little shorter, which means that the pokey end, the end you do not want to get bit by, is a little closer to your hand. So as you can see, I'm really concentrating on where this guy is going and what he's gonna do. And as you can see, I'm really not looking away and looking at the camera, because when you're handling venomous snakes, you've gotta stay uber focused on what you're doing and try your best to read the animal. Right now he's trying to back up a little bit on me, which is something that you've gotta always be aware of. And again, if you can just keep that kind of hook on the ready, keep him away from you, keep that third of his body going the right way. And then when you have your hand and tailing an, a lapid like this, basically what you're doing is you're controlling its spine. So by spinning it, you can get it to come down. So if this guy wants to climb back up on me and get to my hand, I can just spin it and it's gonna flop right back down. But again, you can see, this one's cooperating pretty well. And wow, what a beautiful snake it is too, huh? Depending on how you react to venom with a bite like this, you could be unconscious within five or 10 minutes, you know, so that's not good. But in the best case scenario, you better get to a hospital within an hour or there's a good chance you're not gonna make it. But again, I keep on stressing, think of the medical advancements that we're gonna make from this right here. This type of venom is gonna save people's lives in the future. That's what it's all about. All over the world, snakes lurk in the shadows. We are in the snake territory. Lying in wait. I'm on a hurdle of a rattle. Go. And when humans invade their territory, Whoa. they attack. Don't get bit, don't get bit, don't get bit. Venomous snakes kill over 100,000 people every year and put thousands more in the hospital. I'm just happy to be alive, to be honest. But the venom that takes lives is also used to save lives. Enough to kill us all. It's used in cutting edge medical research for everything from cancer to blindness. Did you bring what I asked for? And to make anti-venom. That's what I call liquid gold right there. But now the planet faces a worldwide venom shortage and demand is at an all time high. I'm like Flynn. Only a select few have the guts and skill to collect this highly toxic liquid from the deadliest snakes on Earth. The kiss of death. I've been doing this for 37 years. Woohoo! big whiff. Holy cow, that's a huge one. I've been obsessed with snakes ever since I was two years old. I've caught almost all the venomous reptiles in this country. Slowly, 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 slowly. They have unique motivations, but each has the same goal saving lives. Snake, crossing the road right here, oh. hurry, hurry. And the thrill of the hunt. All right, let's do this. Get it, get it, get it. I've got his tail. Got him. They are Venom Hunters. All right, guys, what we have here is a red spitting cobra. And of course, a spitting cobra means that it can spit venom, which means I'm gonna need some goggles. Later on in the show, I'm gonna show you another venomous snake that can spit. Uh, so I'm gonna be needing these guys again. But uh, again, you wanna protect yourself. And oftentimes, you really wanna have even a face shield because you really don't want that venom to get in your mouth or your nasal cavities or whatever. But, uh, but this is a red spitting cobra. And these guys are endemic to, um, to East Africa. What a beautiful snake this is too. That is absolutely gorgeous with that red color. And again, these guys are all over East Africa, all the way down into South Africa. And uh, they can shoot pretty good venom for sure. This girl seems like she's pretty good. She hasn't even hooded up, so chances are she's not gonna be spitting. But again, you always gotta take precaution for sure. Now, these guys, you know, I've, I've heard that they can shoot up to to five or six feet pretty accurately right at your eyes. And uh, I actually came across a Mozambique spitter down in South Africa that I played with for a while. And that thing spit at me probably no less than 20 or 30 times. So these guys have quite a bit of venom that they can really 
push out there and you can see it just tried to bite the hook a little bit so you can tell this one's a little bit testy and I probably don't want to get this anywhere near my hands that's for sure now these guys are are definitely got some neurotoxin in as well but they're also cytotoxic and uh, although there's not a tremendous amount of deaths outside of Africa for when it comes to spitting cobras or in particular the red spitters because their venom is pretty bad but it's pretty easy to treat Unfortunately, in Africa, there's quite a few fatalities, and that's because their medical system just isn't that good. And when people get bit, they often aren't getting treatment or the proper treatment. And unfortunately, there's also becoming a lack of antivenom for a bunch of different species over in Africa. And that's another reason for venom research and venom yield is because we need to get those levels of antivenom back up and really reduce the numbers of deaths from stuff like uh, spitting cobras and, and puff adders. And uh, you could tell she's a really intelligent snake. She's sniffing, she's looking around, she's trying to figure things out. And uh, that's a really gorgeous snake though. I mean, when it comes to cobras, Certainly, the red spitters have to be one of the prettiest snakes with this color and that banding up near its neck. I mean, that's gorgeous. And, uh, you know, this is about adult size. They typically don't get much more than four foot. But, man, I tell you what, this may be my favorite cobra outside maybe a king cobra because you definitely can't beat a king cobra. But you see how she just bit that hook again? That tells you right there. Look at her. She's looking at the hook and she's ready to bite it. Oh, my gosh, this girl is ready to go. Tell you what, <laughs> definitely don't want to be on the, the business end of that bite for sure. But there it is, guys, the red spitting cobra of Africa. So this is a pretty uh, interesting noise that I've certainly heard a lot of times when I'm out herping, and that is, of course, a rattle. Give me a little idea about what we have here. This is our pair of albino western diamondbacks, as you can see. They are very feisty. <laughs> I know, you've been telling me all day. He's been telling me all day that this male in particular is a bugger and it has a heck of a strike range. So because you know your animals well, I'm gonna let you take him out and uh, you know concentrate for me and we're gonna just sit back and enjoy the ride for a few minutes. When we get him on the ground, we'll talk about him. So go ahead and do your thing and uh, in the meantime, uh, Western Diamondbacks are really pretty amazing animals. Of course, they're the second largest rattlesnake in the country, uh, just behind their, their very close cousins, the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. And they're also responsible for the most deaths in Mexico of all rattlesnakes, and the second most deaths in the U.S. And again, only second to the Eastern Diamondback. But again, these guys have the perfect alarm system. I mean, when you're walking through the woods and you hear that, that tells you to stay away. These guys aren't killers. They don't want to hurt people. The fact is, is they just want to warn you to stay away from them. And I love the sound of those buttons. But look at this guy. I'm telling you what, the other thing about rattlesnakes is they're like little springs. You think they can only strike maybe a third or half their body, but believe it or not, these guys can spring almost the length of their body. And uh, you want a little help? Yep. All right, I got the back end here. All right. Let's let him down. All right, look at this guy. And like I said, sometimes you feel like you're in your plenty of way. I'm telling you, if I got much closer than I am right now to this animal, it could actually hit me. So, so uh, what, with your experience over the last five, six months working with these diamondbacks, I mean, what, what's the feel? I mean, every time I work with a new species, within a pretty short period of time, I get a pretty good idea of, of what they're like. I mean, what, what do you think about these guys? This, in particular, these, this pair right here, mm -hmm. I have very deep respect for this snake. <laughs> Very deep respect. <laughs> but again, you know, these, these, uh, these guys have such an amazing alarm system. I mean, you can see, as it's getting closer, this thing's going, stay away from me, I'm rattling my tail. And if you're gonna get bit, this is kind of why, you know, you're gonna get too close. I mean, what more can you expect of an animal than to try to warn you as much as a rattlesnake? And, uh, and again, these guys are pit vipers, so they have those really great heat-seeking pits. And, and again, they're a hematoxic animal that does have some myotoxin in it as well. So the hematoxins in these guys are gonna really break down the blood vessels and it's gonna cause a lot of issues, especially with cardiac arrest and so on like that. And then you have the, that myotoxin that's gonna do a lot of the necrosis and really rotting of, of tissues. And, and uh, let, let me just tell you, this is not a bite that you wanna get. The good news is, is that there's really very, very, very few deaths from these guys because there's a lot of options when it comes to antivenom. Obviously, you've got their traditional antivenom, and then Crofab works extremely well on these bites. 
this as well. So as long as you get hospitalized pretty quick, you don't really have any issues when it comes to potential death. But man, I tell you what, it's gonna hurt really bad and it's something I don't wanna do. And the interesting thing about these guys is that the Eastern and Western Diamondback have huge teeth. As a matter of fact, the Easterns can have up to an inch long teeth. These guys are a little bit smaller, but, uh, but this is about adult size, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that the record is probably just under seven foot or about seven yeah. foot, but right, most right. of them are four, five, six foot and uh, and uh, live babies, right? Yeah, my bird. So how many, this size, what, what, how, what kind of yield do you think you get last, out of it? Last season, this girl right here laid 11 babies. Really, 11 yeah. babies. So that 11 gets you perfect live yield. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so this is the first year you guys are breeding them? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Can you guys imagine just walking in and seeing 11 little albino western diamondback rattlesnakes. I mean, what an awesome animal. Now, when it comes to the, the venom on these guys, it's being used for stuff like, you know, again, heart medicine for any kind of issues like that, blood thinners, uh, a lot of potential in this hematoxin right here. Again, from a medical standpoint, they're doing all kinds of studies with the venom on these guys. And that's what's really interesting about this venomous animal. It's just the opportunity and the possibilities of opening up new and improved things. Again, all kinds of different venoms are being used for things even like cancer and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, that every day it seems like there's a new discovery for venomous snakes. So not only do we want venom for uh, the anti-venom, obviously to make sure that people don't lose fingers or die, but we also want it for medical research. And, and a diamondback rattlesnake, like you'll see in our series, Venom Hunters, a lot of the crews are catching these guys and it's really a very big player when it comes to the, the medical side of venom. And just listen to it, calm down. See, as soon as it thinks it's not threatened, it's calmed down. But watch this, as soon as I move forward, all it takes guys so this is it if you ever out in the wild and you come across you're not going to come across an albino well probably not if you come across a rattlesnake of any type of rattlesnake you hear that stay away and you'll be 100 percent fine right that's all it means is stay away <laughs> i do not want to be bugged so guys i need some goggles for this last venomous snake of course this is a java spitting cobra now spitting cobras are just what they are they're spitting cobras they will actually project their venom and it basically is to get into their uh, predators eyes and blind them so whenever you're working with any spitters whether they spit or not because a lot of times in captivity they won't spit you want to make sure you have eye protection and a lot of times you might want a full face mask but we'll see how this girl goes here and uh, and again this is a, a Java and these are absolutely gorgeous animals take a look at the color of the snake oh, look at this animal right here it almost reminds me of a a licorice stick black rat snake or something like that now these guys are pretty much pretty common in all parts of Indonesia in the sense like Bali, uh, they'll go into Java obviously, all the way into Komodo. And they get about anywhere from three to four foot, not much bigger than that. And uh, the thing that's interesting about this venom that's a little bit different than a lot of the other cobras is they do have a little bit of neurotoxin, but the majority of their venom is actually cardiotoxin. Now it's still a pretty bad bite you know there's no doubt you don't want to get bit by something like this but it's a much slower acting venom and again it's going to really attack your cardio uh, system and shut your heart down but I'm told that typically um, venom like this can sometimes take several hours to actually take effect as a matter of fact there's been reports of people being bitten and really not even knowing if they were envenomated for you know up to an hour. So you've gotta be a little bit careful when you get bit by these because the one thing about a lapids is a lot of their bites are what they call dry bites. You know, the snake doesn't really wanna waste its venom on you or anything else. So a lot of times they'll bite you, but they're not actually envenomating you. So sometimes when you get bit by an animal that has a slow acting toxin, you think maybe it's a dry bite. Still probably a pretty good idea to get to the the doctor and make sure, but uh, this is an amazingly gorgeous, and believe it or not, this is exactly how a lot of these guys are found in the wild, this color phase right here. Again, this looks more like a designer morph to me than anything else. Um, it's just it's just absolutely incredible, and, and because these guys are from Komodo, believe it or not, the Komodo dragon oftentimes eats 
these animals. I mean, isn't that crazy to think that a Komodo dragon would eat a cobra just like this? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So, so guys, I tell you what, anytime I have an opportunity to respectfully handle venomous snakes, it's always a great time. I tell you what, I have the utmost respect for these animals and I never want a cowboy with these things. It's not about being cool. It's like I said earlier, there's no badge of honor for getting bit by a snake like this. So the best thing to do is to just handle them with caution, care, and respect, and admire how beautiful these guys are. I really hope you guys will tune in to Venom Hunters tonight on Discovery Channel at 10 Eastern Time. Again, it's a series all about hunting for venomous snakes and getting the venom for medical research and anti-venom. And what a great time it was filming the show, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And this, I tell you what, this day has been awesome. I wanna thank the guys from Black Magic Reptiles. Definitely take a look up and check them out on Facebook. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snakebites TV and on Instagram at snakebites.tv. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday only on Animal Bites TV.